Hey everyone, it's Anna J. Wilner with the Bookish Nook, part of the Author Library Network. And with me today, I am pleased to have author Rebecca Hefner. Rebecca, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Thank you so much again for coming on the show. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. I love doing stuff like this. And um, it's so nice to, to meet you over Zoom. <laughs> um, I've watched your TikToks, so it's nice to you know meet you over Zoom, over YouTube. Um, so thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, so my name is Rebecca Hefner, and that is my um, main author name. I write paranormal and sci-fi romance under that name. Um, I grew up in Western North Carolina in a very small town, but when I graduated college, I moved to the New York City area, and that's where I live today. I live right on the Hudson River of New York City. And um, yeah, I became an indie author about uh, three years ago. Actually, about in November of 2018 is when I published my first book. And now I have 21 books published under, I have two names. <laughs> so um, Rebecca Hefner is sci-fi paranormal romance, and my um, contemporary romance pen name is Isla Asher. So that's, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, th that's quite a change. Moving to, to, to New York City, I can kind of relate. I grew up in a very small town in East Texas, and then we moved to the Houston area, so woo, big change. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is a big change. <laughs> So, well, three years ago, so, and in three years, you got 21 books that you have published. I mean, what has this journey been like? And how did you decide one day, or was it one day all of a sudden, that you just wanted to start writing? Or has this been something that you've thought about for a long time and just went for it? So, uh, so like most authors, I'm a, a voracious reader, as I'm sure you are as well. <laughs> and um, I always loved to read rom romance has always been my favorite genre. Um, I do read other things. I love nonfiction and I love, um, you know, other genres, um, sci-fi and things like that. But romance has always been my favorite genre. And I um, would always have these stories pop in my head and say, one day I would love to be a romance author, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to make any money at it. And I'm one of those people who's had a million jobs. I was a real estate agent and I tried to open a bar and I failed miserably at that. And um, I then eventually got into corporate America where I was a medical sales rep. And I actually did really well and um, excelled at that for over a decade. And um, while I was in corporate America, I would read a lot and I would also listen to a lot of audiobooks because I had to drive, I covered the whole Northeast. So I had to drive all the time. Yeah. And um, I would just think to myself, one day I'm gonna get out of this corporate American job and become an author. And there was one day, it actually, there actually was one day when I was in Buffalo, New York at a um, driving to an appointment in a blizzard. And I would just remember thinking to myself, this is it. This is the day I'm like deciding that I have to get out of this job. <laughs> so I made a plan that I was going to work for two and a half more years in corporate America and save all of my money and use that to fund my author business. And that is exactly what I did. Uh, when I got my very last commission check, which was a huge check in February of 2018, I resigned from my job that day <laughs> and had enough money saved to teach myself basically to become an author. And that was just when self-publishing was really starting to explode right. in 2018. And um, I just was like, I'm gonna teach myself how to do this. And that's what I did. <laughs> Well, before we get into more about your author journey, for those who would like to start with a book in your paranormal romance uh, genre, where would you suggest they start? And likewise, where would you suggest they start in your romance series? Yes. Okay. So I set out some of my paperbacks. In case oh, I love it. <laughs> so I know it's not, it's probably backwards, but anyway. Okay. So the end no. of hatred that's the first book I ever published. It's book one in my paranormal romance series. I wrote this book for about 15 years before I published it. I started writing it in the very early 2000s. So, <laughs> but wow. anyway, yeah, I eventually found an editor and like this became the first book I published. So that's the one I would start with for paranormal romance. The of Hatred. If you like sci-fi twisty time travel romance, then the first book in that series is called A Paradox of Faith. 
Um, this is my series that like no one reads, but it's like final to the most awards and it's like my passion project because I'm a science dork, so. <laughs> but I love it. So. And then for my Isla Asher pen name, um, I have two series. So his holiday pact is just kind of like a, kind of like smudgy. Oh, perfect pen. for right now, guys. <laughs> yeah. Like holiday read. It's short. Yes. It's like, you know, yeah, like fake relationship trope. And then um, I did actually end up writing a small town romance and Hearts Reclaimed, uh, a series and Hearts Reclaimed is the first book in that series. So those are my book ones and all my series so far. <laughs> well, Rebecca and I were uh, talking prior to about, you know, how difficult it is to make that leap. It's a very similar story. I worked in big oil and gas for five years and during that time in corporate America, uh, I, you know, would come home and just pour into the computer, into the laptop, all of the stuff that I had sat there and thought about, you know, during lunch break or, you know, what have you, because your mind just kind of, I think there's that natural progression, don't you think, from being a reader to an author at some point? I do. I really think so. And I think if you love reading, like most authors do, yeah, your your brain works that way. Your brain sort of constructs a story around and these characters appear in your head and you have to write it down. <laughs> so what is your inspiration or do you have like a, a mode of, of kind of uh, conjuring these stories or do they just come to you? Yeah, so I, I feel like this is different for every author. I'd love to yep. hear what happens for you. Like, I mean, for me, the characters appear in my head first, for most of the time. So, so like, the what, the female character will appear, or the male character will will appear, and then the and then the other their you know love interest will appear quite often after that. Um, and then from there, I just see them like these scenes appear in my head and I, I write out of order. I'll just write down whatever scene appears in my head, which my editor is like, that's interesting. I don't have a lot of authors that write out of order, but I like to write it down when it comes in my head. And then I just go from yep. there and then plot, kind of plot backwards. So is that how you do it? Absolutely. So yeah, it kind of starts with um, a lot of times I'll be doing sort of an autonomous task, like driving down the road <laughs> or, yeah. um, or vacuuming or, you know, doing the laundry or the dishes or something like that. And yeah. uh, a scene will just kind of play itself out in my head. And before you know it, you know, I've kind of got this um, start. So I have to get it down before I forget it. So it's, uh, it's a little frustrating waiting for those ideas to come to you. But honestly, when they come to me like that. I don't want to say it in sort of like a, you know, the muse visits me or anything like that. No, but, but it's true uh, though. I, I mean, kind of, yeah, because it's just these random thoughts that pop into your head and, um, or random scenes. And then um, it just kind of, you have to, you know, for some reason that it's got to be written down. So I start that way and I may, you know, really jump into it or I may check it out in a day or two after I've, you know, had some time to play the movie a little bit more in my head, if that makes sense. I, other authors get it, you know, it's kind of yeah. hard to explain yeah. it to a, to a normal person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's very true. <laughs> but but you know you'll play out a good section of the of, of the book or a scene in your head, and then that's when it's time for me to really you know dive into the into the work into the 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 computer. And then if you hit your stride, it's just I mean it's ten thousand words in two days or a day even sometimes and they yeah. don't necessarily it's a rough draft and it's terrible and you know it's but but it's a start right you just get it down so that you yeah. don't forget exactly. <laughs> and then you know you can always you can always edit later <laughs> Ab absolutely but if you don't get it down there's nothing that you have to edit so I think that's um you know where a lot of authors I know that's where I got stuck in the very beginning. It's like I would constantly go back every sentence and reread. And then I just learned, you know what? You know, excuse my French, but 
just yeah. get it all, let it bleed out right. and then right. come exactly. back and do that polish and then do, you know, do it again and then polish it again and polish it again and then send it off to editing and then polish right. it again and polish it again. And, you know, yeah. that's, that's exactly right. That's how you have to do it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a blank page in your computer. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. And and if uh, if you're passionate about it, I, th- I think I think one of the really big things that that um, I don't know I, if I try and force it, if I make myself sit down and write, it doesn't come across as I guess exciting as when it's just flowing, and I'm really passionate about it. I think it comes across more passionate to the reader when you're in that moment than trying to sit down and force it. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree. I actually just made a TikTok about that because I <laughs> I just I just finished my most recent contemporary romance series and I was like, should I just write another one, like write a trilogy and get it done and then I'll go back and write a, like a more twisty sci-fi series under my Rebecca name. And I was like, no, because that's not what's bringing me joy right now. I just like, I don't want to write something that I'm not feeling. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. So, so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, it's like when, when, when you try and force it, it just never quite works out. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And something that I was very honest about in that TikTok is that my contemporary romance books do sell better than my paranormal sci-fi romance books. So probably the smart financial decision would be to write another (laughs) trilogy under that name. But you also have to sometimes just like choose what's best for like, you only get one life. And if you're not feeling joy from doing something and you would get more joy from doing something else, sometimes that is, that is the better decision. Uh Absolutely. If, um, yeah, if, if, I mean, yeah, I, I know that there are, there are times whenever you sit down and you say, oh, you know, this trope is really popular right now. I should write about that. But if you're not feeling it, then it's not going to come across uh, to the reader as genuine and authentic and really from, you know, because we all have our own, you and I could sit down with the same trope and the same basic, I guess, like writing prompt and come up with two completely different stories and a completely different uh completely different twists and turns along the way because every author's voice is so specific and unique to them as an author which we've honed over you know years and books and words and paragraphs and (laughs) sleepless nights sometimes that (laughs) that it would be completely different so um (laughs) absolutely you know You can't, sometimes you catch lightning in a bottle. Right. If you're lucky. Yes, that's very true. And you just have to go when the inspiration strikes, even if it's something that's like, what you're like, what the heck is this? I have no idea. If you're feeling it, you just gotta go, you just gotta go for it. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, um, I, I did that with, um, with the nymphetamine girls, uh, it was just something that I really never, it just popped into my head. It wouldn't let me go. I tried to push it away. It kept coming back. It would never leave my mind. And um, I didn't want to quite go there, but it just was one of those things that, you know, have you ever had one of those things that just won't let you go? Like it has its claws in you and it just won't let you go. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's how, that's my, how I wrote my time travel trilogy. It's like sci- twisty, steamy, sci-fi, time travel romance. Who the heck is going to read that? And I knew it when I was, I was like, this is for me. I, this is because I've always wanted to write a romance novel about a um, theoretical physicist who doesn't believe in love and is in her, almost in her forties and falls in love. No one is going to read this, <laughs> but I don't care because I'm going to write it anyway. <laughs> right. And, you know. It it was in my head, and if I didn't do it, it would just be bothering me. So I just wrote it. (laughs) Exactly. 
Exactly. And, and, you know, some, and really truly they say, you know, write the book that you want to read right for you. And that's really true because if you're not enjoying the process, if you're not enjoying the story, then chances are your readers aren't going to enjoy reading it. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is, so, you know, being, so the, the problem with monetizing something that you enjoy doing is right. that it then becomes a job instead of something fun or something that brings you pleasure. Right. So especially being an indie author, which is so hard, <laughs> um, I think you have to balance. I think you have to put on your business hat sometimes. Yep. And like, don't get me wrong. When I write my contemporary romances, I, I love them. And they're, they're, they're cute and they're tropey. I write them faster because, I mean, I've read so many contemporary romances in my life. I could write them in my sleep, right? I'm sure we right. all can, you know? Um, so I enjoy them. They're great. And my readers really enjoy them. Um, but you, I think you have to balance that. So that's my business hat. I'm like, this is something that right. I write to market and get out there and right. um, do a release so that I can fund some of these other projects that maybe like won't be a bestseller right away, but like I can balance the joy with the business hat. And you have to do both and you have to sort of choose what you're doing, you know, depending upon what, what your cycle is of like publishing and marketing and everything. <laughs> right. And I, you know, I was going to make a TikTok about this and, and it's something that, that a lot of authors don't really, I don't know. It's, it's so the business side of it is so much different and you coming from corporate America, me coming from corporate America, we understand that business aspect of branding. Yeah. And you are essentially, as an author, a small business and your books are a product. And it seems so cold to think of it that way. And a lot of independent authors don't have that mindset. And so it, it becomes like a, um, you know, you lose the passion and the joy for it. So there's, there's that fine line. I, a lot of people will say, oh my God, the, you must have made so much on this book. And I'm, and you're sitting here thinking, yeah, it all went into marketing the next book. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is, and we talked about this a little bit before we started filming, but like, I think that that is the thing, you know, I've never been a lightning strikes kind of author. Like, even though I have 21 books published, I, I still do not make a ton of money at this. Um, yeah, no, right. Yeah. And I, you know, I've never been someone who like had the viral TikTok and like, can right. be like, Oh, look at this. You guys, oh, my, everything spiked. It just, it's just, not, it's just, I just realized a while ago that that's just not going to be me and that's okay. It, that's not going to happen to everybody, you know? So the thing with it that I've realized is like, I just have to like keep chugging along and keep putting out products, keep putting out good products. And the way to do that is to balance the joy with the business, doing both and, you know, trying to find that balance that you do them effectively and to just keep like, um, you know, indie, it's so hard for indie authors to keep putting out things when they're not seeing these huge financial results, but you just have to just keep going. Yeah, I <laughs> don't, don't get discouraged because you just never know when that, uh, that, that idea that you have is going to catch fire as they say. And it's, it's sometimes you see a lot of authors that, that get discouraged. And I hate that to see, because it's not, everyone thinks, you know, and Kat Burgess, she talks about this a lot. And I, I love watching her because she's very open and honest and real about her journey as an author, because she's been doing it for, you know, as she always says, since dinosaurs were <laughs> roaming. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kat. If you if if you do happen to watch this, I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing. But um, but yeah, she's very open and honest about her writing journey and how it's you know it's it's not always. Yeah, everybody thinks getting into it. Oh my God, you're an author and you're just so glitzing and glamorous and you know you're gonna make like a ton of money off of this book. And you know you're comparing yourself to you know Stephanie Meyer, the Stephanie Myers and the J.K. Wow. Rowlings and the and that you know so hardly ever happens. So I think keeping yeah. your expectations in check and what is your version of success? Well, my version of success, I hit that whenever I published my first book. I did it. I yeah. did it. 
I, 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 I took that leap of faith and I actually put it out there. Yeah. And hundred percent. I think, yeah, yeah. It's such a big milestone. Yeah. People don't real and, and everything that's come after that has just been, you know, cool icing on the cake, you know? And so it's true. true. And something, something else that I do that I find very helpful is I keep a folder in my Dropbox of um, all of the emails that readers have or messages, screenshots that they have sent me when they finished one of my books and said that they really enjoyed it. And whenever I have a day where I just want to like, you know, say I'm over this. This is the worst, the worst decision I ever made in my life. What am I doing? Or, you know, you get a bad review on Goodreads or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll go pull up that folder and just read through some of those and be like, okay, you know, the, keep going because your next person who's going to send you one of those notes is out there. Just keep going. Yes, exactly. And it's, you know, the same, you know, people would miss you yeah. if if you stopped writing i mean think of it that way i mean you know yeah. even even if it's even if it's, if, if it's you know 100 people 200 people that's 200 people or 50 people or 25 people that are waiting on the next you know book in the series or the next thing that 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 you put out and so i think you know you've really got to look at it that way yeah definitely yeah, yeah and, i mean if you yeah, I was just to say, if you can do something that brings one person joy, like think of how cool that is. Like that's really, we just live in a world where there's so many people don't experience joy. So if you can put out something that even makes one person happy, right. like do it. <laughs> and, and, and readers, I mean, there, there's a really big secret that we're hiding from you as authors. Once we get bitten by that writing bug, we're kind of, we're kind of addicted. Like we're not going to stop, you know, it, it, I mean, it, it might slow down for a little bit and there might be that discouragement, but it'll always come back. Like you, you can't get away from it. You can't. Yeah. It's true. Because, because, <laughs> because even if you do go back to, you know, corporate America, even if you do go back to a regular nine to five job, you're going to be sitting there, you know, like at your desk, like, daydreaming and then whenever you get home one day you'll be back at that computer <laughs> yes it's, it's so true it's it really never ends no matter what you can you can take a break but it's not you're always going to have that next story in your head <laughs> yeah exactly so what yeah. would you say um if if you were to be starting out and uh, this is always so hard such a hard question that to to answer and to ask, but what mistakes have you made in your writing journey that you wish you, I know, right. That, that you wish (laughs) you wish you would have known then what you know now, uh, for me, I'll go ahead and go first. I wasted a ton of money on that. I never saw a return on investment and I kept, I keep a spreadsheet of the campaigns and the marketing that I do and whether or not I had an ROI or return on investment. And, uh, if, if I didn't, I won't do it again. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, listen, that's a great, yeah. I mean, definitely. I think a lot of people in the beginning, they like throw money away on like Facebook ads and Amazon ads. I mean, you have to learn to do those things. Um, but I still don't have a huge marketing budget. So I don't, I mean, I, I like, I have Amazon ads and Facebook ads running right now. I ran a, a pretty good, a pretty um, nice book club campaign last week, but like, I, you know, I don't spend a ton on that stuff, um, which is why I'm not, I don't sell a ton of books because it, it is correlated, but um, yeah, so that's good to, you know, not spend money, stop spending money on things and keep track of those things. Um that you're losing money on. Um, I think, you know, I wish I had rapid release my first couple of books. I didn't do right. that and I lost momentum between. Um, so like now I'm writing a new trilogy under my Rebecca name. And I am, I, I my last trilogy I wrote, I released book one and then I, I released book two and three, like almost a year later. Was, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I just didn't, I just thought, oh, it's ready. I'll get it out. It's ready, it's edited and whatever. Um, so now my plan going forward for all of my books 
I, all of my series I release is I will release them all rapid release. So at least probably like a month in between each book and put them all up on pre-order so people can just, you know, order the next one. So that was definitely a lesson that I learned. Gotcha. I mean, there's so many lessons. I, don't I know. know so I know. Right. And everyone <laughs> has their own way and everyone has their own way of, of marketing, just like everyone has their own way of writing. So for me, uh, having at least a three month pre-order period, I think for, for that's the way that I choose to do things, you know, um, and that I've seen the best result, but it depends on the author and what they have, you know, seen success with in the past. So, yeah. you know, I'll say that brings up a good point. So something that I've realized is that I think a mistake a lot of authors make, and this is what I made in the beginning, is that I tried to employ the advice of every single person. Who oh, was God. Author. So, like, they would say, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to take this course. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to, and <laughs> finally, yeah. after I did this for a while, what I realized is yeah. that it's great to listen to advice and to be in all the author groups, wide for the win, and, you know, 20 books of 50 K. Right, 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 right. Everyone's going to always have advice and everyone's going to always say, this is how you do it. But the thing is, that's how they did it. They did it. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the advice is good and you should, you should always um, take notes and, and, you know, be cognizant of what other people do. Yeah. But my path to success is not going to look like anyone else's. So I can give all the advice in the yeah. world about what I did and, you know, but it's, it's not going to have the same exact effect on anyone else in their author journey. <laughs> Everybody that is that that is amazing advice to follow right there is to not follow advice. Um you know Rebecca could give me her plan step by step on exactly what she's planning on spending and exactly where she's planning on putting her marketing budget. I could do the same exact thing and my results will be wildly different from her results and it, that's just the way it is. So yes. <laughs> what, whatever works for one person, that's great. I'm happy that it worked for you. Take that tip, move on, try something different if it didn't work for you. Right. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't work for you. That's again, yeah. back to the discouragement thing of like, and again, it's so easy to say, don't get discouraged. Like I, I know, think right? right? Oh, like, I know. Uh, like I just wanted to like scream yesterday. Like I'm, I'm in a better mood today, but like you have days you get discouraged, but oh, God. If, I if it doesn't work, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. No, I'm right. And, and, uh, you know, I've thought about, you know, asking for advice on this, but, you know, what do you do whenever you go through a creative lull? Right now, I haven't written in probably a month. Yeah. You'll hear people say, you must write every single day. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. I agree. So that's one of the pieces of advice that I stopped taking a long time ago. I'll tell you, I just, yeah. So when I, when I put my final book in my, um, Arter Creek series up for, it was book six in the series. It was the final book. I had announced it. When I put that up for pre-order, I took two months off and just focused on marketing. I didn't write a word. And I, I feel like most indie authors would be like, oh my God, but that's and just what works for me. me. Like now I'm back exactly. writing. Yeah. I wrote like 6,000 words yesterday. Like I'm back into writing. It's fine. It's not, you know, so that's the advice that people will give you. You have to write every day. If you want to be, I just, right. I don't know. I have 21 books published and I don't write every day. So I, I yeah. that might work for you or her or him or them, but it doesn't have, right. it's not like a universal rule. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I kind of need some time for that creative well to fill back up. I need to read some books in the meantime. I need to, you know, watch some TV. I need to, you know, go sh on a shopping spree or something. And, you know, I, I yes, <laughs> just be away from it for, for a little bit because, you know, it's just like, yeah. it's just like moms, you know, we need, you know, I'm speaking of, you know, my kid's not here right now and I have the freedom to, you know, vacuum without her freaking out because she's scared of it. You know, we all need a little time off from, from those things and authors and writing are no different. Sometimes we need some space from each other. Yes. Totally. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And it really does refill that creative well, so that when you focus on writing again, yeah. then you, that just comes so much easier. Yeah. 
Exactly. Well, Rebecca, thank you so very much for coming on the show and chatting with me today. I've had an absolute blast. And uh, I know that that everyone watching the show or this episode will take a lot away from uh, your experience and just, you know, what, what we've been talking about, both of our experiences. Um, so yeah. guys, make sure to check out the links in the description below. I will have Rebecca's uh, Amazon links to her uh, Amazon author page. Uh, that's another thing, a uh, uh, great piece of advice, a must. Guys, have your Amazon author page, your author pages. Unfortunately, you, you kind of have to, you know, get all of that stuff done and, you know, make sure that, yeah. that people can find you. Make sure that you're findable. <laughs> Get your Goodreads, <laughs> yeah. Get your Goodreads profile up and do all of that stuff. You know, that's the, that's the, the the crap stuff that that we don't ever talk about. Yeah. <laughs> it takes forever, but you have to do it. And, right, uh, you're and so worried about that. Like, yeah. and thank you make sure so much for having me. <laughs> like, yeah, like make sure that you have your author photo and you know all of that crap. Oh. God, yes. I. By the way, I have to do a new one of those, but it's whatever. It's like I, it's, the list is this long, and that's. I know, here. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, thank you again um, for coming on the show, guys. Um, if you haven't already, for having me. <laughs> yes, my my pleasure, absolutely, guys. If you haven't already, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on great upcoming content. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye. Have a good day.